Really happy to have on this Front Stretch podcast this week, Cup Series Rookie of the Year contender, Anthony Alfredo, Fast Pasta, The Sauce, whatever you want to call him. Man, I'm sure that is probably sounding pretty good to you, even though it's only been, what, a month or so here that you've been called a Cup Series driver. Doesn't get old, does it? Not at all. It definitely has gone by really fast. It, it doesn't feel like a month, but that's it's probably about what it is so far. Been very yeah. busy, the busiest I've ever been in my life, but for the better. It's It's been incredible. All the great things I've been able to experience and, and all the the virtual meetings mm-hmm. I've had and, and getting to know people, other people in the industry and just preparing for what's going to be a huge milestone in my career, not just the Daytona 500 my, as my first Cup Series yeah. race, especially of the season, obviously, but uh, just for the season in general. So I'm definitely looking forward to get started and very thankful to all of my partners, Front Row Motorsports, Ford Performance, uh, my family, everyone who's been by my side throughout this journey. And I feel like this is only the beginning. You know, I'm just very grateful to be in the position I'm in. I, f- I feel very blessed and I just plan to make the most out it of it. It has to be one of the more crazy off seasons, not just for you personally, but probably all time. You know what I mean? Like this is what this has been an unprecedented time in the world. NASCAR is no different, and you just happen to be up in your game into the Cup Series. It has to be one of the weirdest few month stretches of your life. Absolutely, and I'm sure it'll be like that yeah. this whole season. To be honest, you know, last year moving up into the Xfinity Series, even on a part time basis, was a big step for myself and my career. And I only got to run one race with practice, my yeah. first one. The rest of them, we had no practice. I wasn't able to utilize my rookie tests, and the same case is going to be for this season as well. So. That's going to be a challenge in its own, but as far as just the overall structure of the year and the race season, like you were mentioning, is definitely strange. Uh, I'm just glad that everything is, has been able to work out, and, and we still had a successful season last year, and I hope to do the same this year, even considering all those things. I think I accomplished everything I wanted to you know, while running, considering I was running right. part-time last year, and this year to run every week full-time and be able to move up and run every week full time is a huge opportunity for me to to prove myself, get experience, learn uh, from the the best drivers in the world. So I'm definitely uh, excited to say the very least and just ready to get going. So take me back to like middle of last year or Texas last year when you, when you're having your final Xfinity Series start. Was Cup ever on the radar? Like like did you realistically think, all right, this off season, me and my team are going to try to band together, get some sponsorship. Let's go full-time cup racing. Was that even on the radar for you? To be honest, not really. Uh, We, we definitely uh, were, we're trying to figure things out and, you know, the last few years have definitely been challenging. Uh, I've been very fortunate to, to be able to compete in, in competitive equipment. However, it's been on part-time basis. So I haven't been able to go out there and, and carry momentum or, you know, you, you kind of string together some good runs and then you stall out because you're off for two weeks or the opposite. Maybe you don't have a good run and then you have to sit out for two, three weeks before you can go try yeah. again. And it gets very challenging. However, I think I learned a lot from it because it taught me to make the most out of each opportunity, especially when they were, you know, fewer and further between. Uh, and then in addition to that, I think it humbled me in a way. Uh, just, you know, having that experience and, and not knowing the last couple of years what I was going to do the following year has definitely been a lot yeah. of uncertainty. But everyone at Team Dylan Management, Austin Craven and, and Austin Dylan, all my family and, and all of our partners since the beginning of my career have stuck by my side. And uh, like I always say, you know, last year in particular, it was like we had a, a different sponsor of ours yeah. on the car almost every week. Uh, but that's a true testament to all the amazing people who've supported me and, and believe in me. And I'm just thankful for, for that because it was uh, pretty awesome to be able to go do what we did and to still move up after that with all that uncertainty. And, and like you said, we were, you know, at the time, probably we we're just looking for the best opportunity to pre- that would present itself. A few came and went, and uh, this one obviously came up, I, I think, uh, originally there was there it wasn't even an uh there wasn't even an open yeah. seat originally and every, the way everything just kind of happened uh it was somewhat right right place right time a really great fit for me um and I, I couldn't be more thankful i'm i'm really excited about it everyone's been a pleasure to work with so far and um I, like i said i just uh i'm just very excited to get going it hasn't even hit me completely yet that i'm going to be racing the cup series especially not just because i we didn't really expect it originally, uh, but just because of the fact this is 
part of, you know, achieving my ultimate goal of, you know, someday being a cup series yeah. champion and to go racing at the cup series level is, is one step closer to that. Uh, and you always hope you get to that point, but when it actually comes, it's unbelievable. So I'm curious as to your inner circle right now, because Anthony, you're 21 years old. If, if I have that correct, I'm 25, 24. God, I'm aging myself already. Um, and NASCAR is obviously skewing a little bit younger, trendy stuff happening this off season. MJ's in Pitbull's in Justin Marks, all these things are going on. Not many people your age can say that they're a driver in the cup series, moreover, a race car driver period. What are your best friends, your, your friends, your family, what are they saying about this venture for you now that you're a cup series driver? Everyone's really pumped for me, which, which means a lot. It's really nice to have my family support and, I grew up a race fan, as I always tell yeah. people. Uh, today's actually my mom's birthday, and I, oh. I posted a picture of my mom at the Richard Petty Experience at Charlotte Motor Speedway before I was born. Wow! So my parents are were real, authentic race fans, and that's how I grew up, mm -hmm. how I got interested in it, and what ultimately, you know, led me to to wanting to to get involved with the sport, uh, and then ultimately finding my passion driving race cars. So. I'm very thankful for that. And, and it's from where I grew up in Ridgefield, Connecticut, not many people are race mm -hmm. fans or, or NASCAR in particular. Um, and like I said, my parents were, they were going to races, watching races and all that before I was alive. And when I was born and grew up, that's all we did. So um, it's pretty special. I think I have a different perspective of the sport and my whole family, we all have this unique appreciation. You know, my family comes to the racetrack, they're there as fans but they're also there as my family yeah. watching me race. And now to do that, you're kind of take that and transition to the highest level of our sport, the NASCAR, NASCAR Cup Series is really cool. So um, there's, there's a lot of friends since I, I ended up doing high school online when I started racing just because I was traveling so much. So um, I've stayed in touch with a few and I know um, they're excited as well. And then there's some other people. I would just be curious what they would say because, I you know, there's people you just everyone kind of grows yeah. and, and does their own thing, goes to college, whatever. But uh I don't know. I'm, I'm more, uh, just, I've got a tight knit circle yeah. and, uh, they're all great people to have by my side. So let's get into the racing a little bit. Obviously this year you're on the record saying, you know, you're, you're aware you're not going to win races week in and week out front row motorsports is not that team. They are not Joe Gibbs racing. They are not team Penske. They are not Hendrick motorsports. What they are is a very solid team and they have been for the last half a decade, decade or so. So realistically, what do you think the expectations are? for yourself personally and for your team overall this season? I mean, are we going to set a target running position, a target points finish, average finishing position? Have you have you gone through any of that at all, realistic expectations for the year? That's a great question. You know, we haven't really pinpointed our performance based on our actual end result mm -hmm. yet. I think that's something that's going to come as I get a little bit more experience running these longer races. There, Most of them are almost if not double the length of an Xfinity yeah. series race. So I'm going to have to, you know, I've been trying to prepare as, as best as I possibly can for that. Uh, but I'm going to need to get used to that physically, mentally learn how you strategize a cup series race with it being longer, you know, the, the pit cycles, when you're going to pit, what strategy you're on is going to depend on where you're running. Uh, and there's just so much that goes into it. So really it's going to come down to experience and everyone knows yeah. that that was obviously the whole, whole, uh, a whole part of this uh, decision and considering, you know, me for this ride was my inexperience. Um, but it was just a great fit. And we, we, we all know um, that none of us have any sort of unrealistic expectations expectations we just plan to go out there and, and make the most of it at least i do and i know the team is is expecting the same so just get better every week is the ultimate goal to be honest i would love to just at the end of the year have a a chart of our progression throughout the season of things learned and just see it go like this you know no plateaus and definitely no declines in 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 learning i'm not even saying actual finishing position yeah. but i'm sure those will inevitably improve um, so we'll eventually start probably sh having a, a finishing points placement goal and, and some yeah. finishing goals as the year goes on. But to start, we're just going to go into it with our with our heads down, working hard, doing all we can. And, and Front Row Motorsports has improved tremendously in the last couple of years in particular. And I'd love to help them continue to build that momentum. And I know Michael McDowell, with all his experience, is not only great for the team, but he's going to be huge for me to lean on. So I think uh, I think we're all pretty optimistic. 
took the next question right out of my mouth. Planning on leaning on Michael McDowell a good bit, I assume, especially this year because he's really good on those road courses and he got a handful of those on the schedule. He's proven on super speedways as well. Good to have him as your teammate this year. Absolutely. Michael's one of the nicest guys I've ever met in the industry, at least from behind the wheel. And um, he, him and I have been talking pretty much every day. He's uh, very considerate and just willing to help me, which is huge. Uh, I'm always willing to learn new things. So to actually have someone who's, who's willing to, you know, hand some of that information o- over and guide me, make that transition a little bit easier is something I'm very thankful for and, and plan on, you know, definitely leaning on him more throughout the entire season, especially as we lead up to our first race. Um, his experience in general is going to be huge uh, for me to lean on and kind of get some advice from. Uh, but he'll be extremely insightful on the road courses, as you mentioned, cause, because for me, those are probably my weakest point heading into the season, okay. arguably, just because of the fact I don't have very much road course experience mm-hmm. at all. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be big for me to, to learn from him and his road racing experience. And, you know, he always performs very well. So I'm looking forward to uh, to tackling that challenge with him. So when you figured out that you were going to be in the cup series and then you were like, Oh yeah, they added four more road courses or whatever it was. You were probably like, damn it, man. I wish I just got a couple more under my belt. It's all right. You know, to be honest, I'm, I'm looking forward to it to me. You're not going to get better at them without actually doing sure. it. And, and it would, it would obviously be great if I could have more experience, but at the same time, fortunately, multiple of those tracks are new to the series. Mm-hmm. And I know a couple of them, some of the cup series drivers have run an Xfinity, even I haven't. Um, But I did go to the Indy road course last year. A lot of those guys haven't run there yet. So maybe that'll help me a little bit. And, uh, and then Coda and places like that, they're going to be new for everyone, which, like I said, my overall road course experience might still make it a little bit challenging, but it's a new track. So I'm excited about it. And I think it'll be a great opportunity just for me to get better at road Mm -hmm. racing. The few times I have done it, I loved it. Um, So I'm looking forward to it. Actually, I wasn't too uh, I wasn't too upset about. It. I was I was actually excited for it to be added to the schedule, and I think the fans are too. Good. I'm trying to rack my brain. When you were in K and N, uh, was New Jersey still on the schedule at that point? Did you end yeah. up doing that? Yeah. Yep. That that and Watkins Glen. Right. Right. So you got a you got a little bit of experience on those, so you shouldn't be too too bad of a fish out of water. That's obviously going to be a challenge for you this year. Also, Anthony, I'm curious personally or anything else team-wise, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge, the biggest unknown heading into this year? Is it the fact that you have limited practice time and qualifying time? Is it going to be the weirdness that is COVID and not really getting to manufacture a really close-knit relationship with your team and your crew chief? There's a whole lot of ways you can take this one, but biggest challenge or biggest unknown for you heading into your rookie year? That's difficult to answer because there's definitely multiple things. The first that comes to mind is definitely no practice. You know, we'll have it for Daytona 500, Coca-Cola 600, then the new additions to the schedule like Nashville, Bristol Dirt, Mm -hmm. some of the road courses. So, you know, we'll make the most of it then, I'm sure, when we do have it. But (laughs) uh, for the rest of the events, you know, seat time is seat time. And and the the less I get, I feel like, you know, that definitely doesn't help. Uh, So that'll, that'll probably be the that's the first one that stands out to me. And other than that, it's just, uh, I'd say that's the first one that comes to mind right now. Yeah. All right. You can't say excited, but give me your thoughts on the Daytona 500 in one word. Incredible. And that's your first cup race. How about that? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that was my first cup race as a fan too. I know. I remember hearing that story. Yeah. 2012. So I still have this little patch I got at one of the souvenir booths. It's like a uh, embroidery patch. So um, I have it like still in the Ziploc bag tacked on my oh, cork wow. board. Yeah. How about that? That was, uh, was that Matt Kenseth's year? Uh, I, no, I think it was Jamie McMurray's. 2012? I don't think you're right, actually. No. 2010 was Jamie McMurray because 2011 was Trevor Bain. 2012 was Matt Kenseth. We're going to pause. I'm going to look this up. What year did Juan Pablo hit the jet dryer? Because I was there then, too. I was also there. Uh, Or maybe I wasn't there because the 2012, wasn't that when it was rained out to a Monday? Yep, yes. Matt Kenseth. I, and did was that the same year he hit the jet dryer? Yeah, no? same year Juan Pablo hit the jet okay. dryer. Okay. Oh, man, I've had it wrong this whole time. So my first Daytona 500 was 2010. Okay, and my that was Jamie. second was 2012. But okay. I, but I didn't. I must not have got a souvenir the first time. 
maybe I got a shirt or something because I have the patch from 2012. Huh. But that makes sense because I know for a fact the time uh, the race was moved to Monday because of that incident. Yeah. It, we didn't get to finish the race, but I know that was my second time because I was so excited to go back there again. Yeah. And we didn't get to see the finish because we had to fly back home to, to New York. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. I'm glad we got that under control. You're welcome. Well, even cooler. <laughs> so it's like almost, you know, just just barely over 10 years since yeah. the first time I was there. That's crazy. Sweet. That, that's which crazy. is half my life, which is really weird to say. Too. I know <laughs> it's it's insane how life works. But hey, not complaining right now because they told nope. 500 great American race for a reason. It's going to be going to be really fun to watch you out there and again it's a super speedway race so not to say that you and michael are going to be hooked up and, and possibly at the front but i'm just saying i wouldn't be surprised if that happens yeah that's the plan especially with our third car the 36 yeah, david, david reagan trying to race his way in um he finished fourth last year so yeah. if he races his way in that'll be huge for us at front row motorsports to have three cars in the race uh and of course with all the other ford performance mustangs out there i think it'll be There'll be a big tandem going of oh, us yeah. boys, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to get it done at the end. Blue Oval Brigade will be in full force, that's for sure. Yep. Anthony, I know you're going to do a lot of eye racing, even though you've done it in the off season. You do it year round, so people can expect to watch you on Twitch throughout the throughout the season here during the week, right? Absolutely, my Twitch channel is fast underscore pasta. You're damn right, I'm it streaming is. Streaming <laughs> regularly on there. I've got a. I'm usually racing in a league event at least twice a week. Cool. Um. And then other times I try to hop on just for fun to run some races, but it's been a pretty busy schedule and I'm sure it'll get even busier once we actually start racing, oh, yeah. uh, but I'll still be on there a couple times a week at the very least. Well, man, uh, I thank you for your time today. I hope the listeners enjoyed hearing from you ahead of your first cup series points paying race being the Daytona 500 nuts. Uh, best of luck this year. It's going to be really fun to watch you grow mature. I know you're going to learn a lot. So stay safe down there. I'll actually see you in Daytona. So should be a good time, and thanks for coming on today. Perfect. Thank you.